Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we are, in fact, going to learn how to edit stuff. Now, I've been weirdly getting a lot of questions and comments about how to animate photos. Is there a cooler way that I can animate my photos rather than just kind of scaling in on it and having it look boring? And the answer is absolutely yes. It is called the parallax effect. You may have seen it done in other places. It's really popular on Instagram right now and in a lot of things on Netflix. A lot of people are starting to do this, but it's basically where you take a two-dimensional photo and you turn it into two and a half dimensions. It's not quite three dimensional, it is two and a half dimensional and it looks really cool and it's relatively easy to achieve. So check this out. Here's the original photo that we're going to be working with today. My buddy Rich Locke and I worked on this in Poland. I think it was, it doesn't matter where it was, but this is the original photo and this is what we're going to be doing with it today. We're going to add some 3D or two and a half D camera movements to it. We're going to fake some depth of field. We're going to make the body parts or the extremities kind of move in 3D space and it is a really cool and kind of unique effect. So you guys are going to take what you learn in today's video and apply it to your own photography or whatever you guys are going to want to do. But if you do want to follow along with me today, there is a link in the video description below for you to download the photo and work side by side, hand in hand. I didn't know what I was going to say there, but we're going to keep going with it anyway. Download the photo in the video description below if you want to work with me and open up Adobe After Effects because we are getting started right now. All right, After Effects is open and we are starting a new composition, 1920 by 1080 at 10 seconds long. Nothing crazy going on just yet. And we're gonna take that photo that you downloaded from the video description below or your own photo and you're gonna drop it onto the timeline right below. Now it is much larger than 1920 by 1080. So just hit S on your keyboard and scale it down to a realistic size to fit within your composition. And now we are ready to go. Now for this effect to really work the best, what you're gonna wanna do is have a photo with a seemingly nondescript or non complex complicated background because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be doing a content aware fill over the space where the body is. That'll make a little bit more sense in just a second. But if your background is too complicated, it's going to look really weird and really like kind of messy in the background. So any photo that you have that's non-descript, like even this would look good, much similar to this. Anyway, you're going to want your background to be not so crazy. But if you're working along with me using this photo, it will work just fine. Let's come up here to the pen tool and let's zoom into this photo using the mouse wheel. And what we're gonna do is we're going to cut me out of this photo. Now, I'm not gonna take a lot of time to do this absolutely perfectly, but the more precise you can be with your mask, the better that this effect is going to look. But I think that we're gonna be okay even being a little lazy. So we're gonna fast forward through this part of the video right now because this is kind of time consuming and I don't want this tutorial to be like a million years long. So I'm gonna fast forward me cutting myself out of this photo. Ooh, okay, that was a lot of clicking, but we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We have cut myself out of this photo and it is looking pretty good so far. So the next thing we're going to do is come over here to our masks, tool this down just a little bit, and we are going to feather this mask by one pixel. And that's all we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is click on our layer, hit control D to duplicate it on top of itself. And then we are going to just mute this layer. On our bottom layer here, we are going to change the mask from add to subtract. And then what we're going to do is take our mask expansion and expand the mask by 10 pixels. And basically what that's going to do is it's actually going to expand this mask past where we made the path because we want the content aware fill to have a little bit more to work with so that our background can be nice and clean. So now that we've done that, we're going to come right over here to our side panel and go to content aware fill. If you guys don't have this whole side panel up here, come to window workspace, all panels, and that should put the content aware fill right over here on the right hand side. So now that we have our content aware fill, what we're going to do is shrink our work area down to just one frame. We're going to make sure that our range is set to work area. So we're only going to be working with one frame. The fill method, we are going to use surface and we're going to generate the fill layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate a background based on content aware properties of this background. And it actually looks surprisingly good. After Effects is really good at doing stuff like this. So I'm going to drag this content aware fill in between my two layers and then enable my top layer. And basically what I wanted to do was separate myself from the background so I can kind of move myself freely in the space so that we can do that 2.5D parallax effect. So we only have one frame of this content aware generated. And because this is a still image, we don't need to generate more than one frame. So we're going to right click on this, go to time, freeze frame. And then we're just going to extend this all the way out. And then just to keep things nice and tidy, we're going to take this fill layer and our background layer and pre-comp by hitting shift control C on the keyboard. And we're going to call this background 
we'll rename this to Ian Float or whatever you guys are using. You can just rename your layers to keep everything nice and tidy. And now we are ready to start doing stuff in 3D space. That was pretty easy to do. The most time consuming part of this whole process is actually masking yourself out of the photo. So once you've got that done, the rest is gonna be piece of cake, chef's kiss, super easy. Let's keep going. <coughs> Both of these layers, let's turn them to 3D by turning on this little cube icon right here. And we're gonna make those layers 3D. And then the next thing we're gonna do is add a new camera by coming up to layer new camera and mine is set to a 50 millimeter default and I'm gonna click okay. And then right here where it says one view, switch it to two views horizontal. And we're gonna be looking at this area over here for right now. Basically what this is, is we're looking at a top down view of our composition. So you're looking at it from the ceiling and you can see the camera in your scene and where your layers are based on these little horizontal lines. So what we're gonna do is take our background composition by clicking on it. And you see these little arrows right here. If I zoom in, you can see them a little bit more. Move this backwards. So I'm actually putting Z space separation between myself, which is this layer here and the background. And now what I'm gonna do is take this background layer, hit S on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna scale it up back to where it originally was. And basically what I'm doing is I'm creating fake depth between myself and the background so that we can use it to do some depth of field work a little bit later in the tutorial. But right now, what it's time to do is plot out our camera movements that we want in our scene. And in my head, what I'm seeing is it's starting close to my body, it's pulling out fast, and then it's gonna pull away kind of slowly as I fall towards the ground. So we're gonna do the camera movement first so we can get that rocking. At frame zero here, I'm gonna to tool down my camera options, go to transform and set a position keyframe for my camera. And I'm gonna take the Z icon over the camera right here. And I'm just gonna push it in close to my body, right there on my crotch, that looks nice. And then I'm gonna to go to about uh, 10 frames and I'm gonna pull this back in Z space, framing myself up right there in the frame. And then over the course of time to about five seconds, I'm just gonna pull this out we're only gonna to go to the bounds of our pre-comp and you can see that right there on the right hand side. So I'm gonna end it about right there. Then what I'm gonna do is right click on position, go to separate dimensions. I'm going to turn off the X and Y position because we're not using it. And I'm gonna highlight all of my Z position keyframes, hit F9 on the keyboard, then come over here to my graph editor and I'm just gonna smooth out this graph in Z space right here. So just making sure that we pull this by holding shift and clicking and holding all the way over to the left. So when it gets to the end of this, there's no sudden stopping movements and we're just gonna smooth this out just a little bit. So what it's doing is it's pulling out really fast and then once it hits this keyframe, it is slowly pulling out all throughout the duration of the five seconds and this is kind of what we're left with. And this is exactly what I was thinking in my head. So now that we've got our camera movement down, we are going to keep going and we're going to fake that depth of field. So going over to frame zero, what we're gonna do with our camera is right down here where it says camera options, we are going to tool that down, enable depth of field. Currently it is off, that is the default for After Effects cameras. We are going to turn it on and then we are going to mess around with the focus distance and the aperture. So if I come over here and I set my focus distance to myself. Now the focus distance is going to be this line right here. If you increase it or decrease it, it will move in and out depending on what you're doing. So what I wanna do is I wanna set it right over this line which I know is my layer right here. So I'm gonna line it up exactly. And then I'm going to crank up the aperture. Right now it's at 25. I'm gonna crank it up to, I don't know, 300 something. Like, yeah, let's go right around like 330, 350, whatever. It's gonna differ depending on the resolution of your photo, but that looks about good for me. And basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set keyframes for the focus distance to fake that depth of field that I was talking about earlier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by focusing on the wall. And then as the camera pulls out, we will then hit focus on my body and we will retain focus on my body throughout the duration of the composition. It sounds more confusing than it actually is. Let's keep going. So frame zero. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a keyframe for the focus distance and I'm going to decrease it so it is just focused on the wall. And you can see again here by these horizontal lines, I'm just lining it up with my background layer. I'm gonna to go to my next keyframe, which is right here. And I'm going to set the focus distance to myself right about here. And then over the course of five seconds, I'm gonna set my focus distance, making sure to maintain focus on myself in the layer. And what you can do is you can actually click through here and just make sure that your focus distance is going to be correct. So maybe we'll come to two seconds and set another keyframe. These don't have to be very smooth. Maybe three and a half seconds, set another keyframe. You're basically wanting to maintain the focus distance to your subject the entire time. Cool, now that we've got that, let's check it out. There you go, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be focused on the wall through my legs and as the camera pulls out, 
now we are doing something really cool. So we are done working in the two camera view now. We can switch this back to one view and we can fit it back to our composition window. And we're kind of done working with the camera at this point. So what I'm gonna do is collapse this layer and actually turn hiding on the camera on so that we no longer have to deal with it until we're ready. Now, the other thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna make my body fall. So I'm gonna go to my fall layer. I'm going to add a position keyframe right about here and then come down to the end, add another position keyframe and I'm going to move myself on the Y axis down towards the ground. And at the very beginning, maybe I'll start a little bit higher as well. So there you go, I am now falling towards the ground. And since we have our camera muted, this is gonna look pretty boring, but when you mix it with the camera movement, this is gonna look really cool. So the only other thing we have left to do is apply the puppet mesh warp to this layer, and it is very easy to do. We're gonna click on the layer that you wanna add the warp to, come right up here to this little push pin icon, and then zoom in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set some points on my body that we want to be able to move. Now, my best advice I can give you during this process is to set points on the mesh where you actually have joints in your body. So you're not gonna to wanna to set a point right here because there's no joint. You're gonna to wanna to set the point at the elbow because that's where things actually pivot from and in the center of the hand. That'll make a little bit more sense right now. So I'm gonna set a point in the center of my foot right at the joint in my knee. We're gonna set two at the hips because that is where my joints are. One more in the knee, one more in the foot, one in the hand, one in the elbow, one in the shoulder. One in the shoulder, one in the elbow, one in the hand. And since I'm holding a camera right here, I'm gonna actually put it in the center of this whole shape, which is like right about there. I'm gonna set one right at the neck. I'm gonna put one on my head and I am actually going to set some mesh warps for this badge because I want the badge to be moving as well. So this is the basic functionality of the human anatomy. If you wanna put an anchor point right in the center right there, you can as well. But this is kind of where all the joints are. So now on this layer, if I come down to effects and I go to the puppet warp mesh one and on deform, if I hit U on the keyboard, it will show me all of my keyframes for all of my pins that we just set. And what I'm gonna do is come all the way down here to the end at five seconds. Click on this first puppet pin, hold down shift, scroll all the way to the bottom, click on the last one, and then add new keyframes for all of the pins. So now we have a keyframe set at the very beginning and at the very end, which means that we can animate. So what I'm gonna do now is click on this pin at my foot and I'm gonna do a very unrealistic movement just so you guys can see exactly how this works. So I'm gonna pull my foot all the way down and as you can see, it is bending at the knee joint, which is exactly what we want. This looks a little bit wonky, but over the course of time, that foot is actually going to come up as I'm falling down because we are able to kind of manipulate all of these body parts using the mesh warp. So this is how we're gonna do our movement of me falling. So at the very beginning, what I'm gonna do is set my foot to be a little bit lower here, this foot to be a little bit lower here, maybe this hand a little bit lower there, this badge I'm gonna bring up like this and my camera bring down like so. And then over the course of time, those extremities will kind of move. And at the very end, maybe I want this camera to go a little bit more aggressively. So I'm actually gonna pull it up like this because I want that to be moving the most. And maybe this foot comes up a little bit more than it should. All right, let's watch that through. Looking really, really cool. And obviously the focus here is on my hand here and on this foot here, which are moving more than anything else on my body, which I think is totally fine. Because basically what you wanna do is just have a little bit of movement to make this not look so much like a still photo. And this is looking really cool. So I'm happy with this. We're gonna move on. All we're gonna do is re-enable our camera layer here by turning on the eyeball over here on the left-hand side. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have done something really cool with a camera in 3D space, the puppet mesh warp tool, and cutting myself out of this image and making it look as though I am falling towards the ground. And this is not just a still image anymore. It is a 2.5D parallax still image that you and I learned how to do together today. Give yourselves a round of applause. If you followed along and you got to this point of the tutorial, I am very proud of you. If you're using your own photo, maybe you ran into a couple little issues here and there. Maybe your background was too complex. You had to do a little bit of, you know, finesse in the photo, but the concept still is the same. If you guys wanted to get really crazy with it, you can add some particles in 3D space onto this image. You can do a little bit with the camera movement. You can kind of make this and tweak this however you want. It doesn't have to be exactly what we did today. 
everything is malleable and everything can be changed. So maybe you wanna push into the photo instead of pulling out. All you have to do is switch that camera movement around and fix your focus distance in that. And now you can kind of change it. You can rotate the background layers in 3D space to give it different looks. So you guys can just experiment with these things. It is basically made up of three very simple objects. It is the 3D camera, your subject, and your background. So if you just kind of plug and play a bunch of different variables onto those three things, you're gonna get a lot of really cool results at the end of the day. So just to recap, because we always do here on Learn How to Edit Stuff, it's a nice little roundup at the end of the lesson. Okay, you're gonna take your photo, throw it into After Effects, then you're gonna mask out your subject, create your content-aware fill layer, freeze frame it, extend it, then pre-comp that background so you have a nice separation between your background and your subject. The next thing you're gonna do is add your 3D camera, make your camera movements, fix your focus distance. Then you're gonna animate your subject with a little bit of position and scale. If you'd like, you're gonna add your puppet mesh pins to that subject and you're gonna slowly kind of animate the extremities over time and it's gonna look awesome. And that's pretty much it. That's the bare bones of the parallax effect and go in and change this as much or as little as you guys want. You're going to get different cool results every single time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Happy 2020, everybody. If you're not already subscribed, please, please go ahead and do so by clicking this subscribe button and check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at learn how to edit stuff at Naughty and Sands on social media. If you want to get in touch, give me a, an example of a video that you want to see done. I will do my best to make it happen. Subscribe. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.